Steroid molecules are particularly valuable because they have such a wide range of biological activities. In plants even, and especially in mammals, they have hormonal capabilities that in impact uh, fertility. They, both men and women, they have hormonal capabilities that impact how the body reacts to inflammation. So they are really key compounds and so they are important synthetic targets because the thinking is it would be nice to be able to make these naturally occurring steroids either to use them medically or to understand them in their biological roles but also because if you can make those you probably can make some ones that have structural similarities but are different and their biological activities might be even more desirable medically for instance, they might last longer, they might be more potent, they might have greater selectivity. So steroids are really key synthetic targets. But my gosh, take a look at the structure. By definition, steroids have three six-membered rings that share side with each other in a five-membered ring. In addition, they typically have methyl groups here and here. There often is functionality here. Hydroxyl is common. And something is typically almost always attached here. I'm going to show in this case a tertiary alcohol where we have this alkyl group attached. And let's just say that we'd like to make this molecule. To make the drawing of these structures easier, let me abbreviate this whole thing by simply saying that we've got a ring and a ring and a ring and a ring without drawing in all the details. We've got some stuff stuck here, there. We've got an OH, that's the big deal, here. And we have a tertiary alcohol here. Now, commonly, it's possible to isolate from natural sources steroids that have this part of the structure available, and perhaps this part of the structure available. But let's say that we would like to think of this as a target molecule that we want to make where for our strategy, we're going to add this alkyl group, this particular part of the chain. So, to be clear, we'd like to add these carbons. Or there's a hydroxyl group here. And we know that when we have a tertiary alcohol, there are actually three possible ways using a Grignard reaction that we could make this molecule. I want to outline two of them for the moment. One of the possible options would be to start with this tetracyclic molecule. Oh, it's my methyl group sticking in there. And I have the OH here and have a Grignard reaction attached here. That Grignard reagent then would be reacting with a ketone. So these would be the two components in our synthetic strategy for making this target. Or, alternatively, We could think of this tetracyclic precursor There's our methyl groups, there's our hydroxyl group. 
with the ketone. And then we're talking about a Grignard reagent that looks like this. Do you see a problem with these strategies? What I'm thinking about is the planning of the use of a Grignard reagent in the presence of a hydroxyl group. We know that hydroxyl groups protonate Grignard reagents and then ball game over. They can't react. The planning of using a Grignard reagent in the presence of a hydroxyl group. Seriously flawed synthetic planning. But it would be nice to be able to do this kind of thing. And the strategy that is used is to change the hydroxyl group into something that doesn't have the OH here, but could be regenerated to be the hydroxyl group later. That's called using a protecting group. Now that we've talked about the steroids, let's talk about a simple molecule instead that is a representative example of this very same kind of thing. Here's a case where we might plausibly think of making a diol starting with a bromide Treating with magnesium to make the Grignard reagent. Then reacting with a, let's say, aldehyde. in an initial step, followed by water, to finish off the reaction, to make a diol. And there's the new bond, there's the new OH, and here's the R group. And here's the initial OH. And what we've said is, oops, the presence of this OH group prevents this reaction. So this synthetic strategy is flawed. The idea is then to change this into something else that could be used later to regenerate the OH group. Take a look. Of the many possibilities for doing this, one that is widely used employs a trimethyl, and I'm going to write methyl as ME, silochloride, together with triethylamine. And the triethylamine is simply to neutralize the HCl that would be formed in this process. As we make a functional group called a trimethylsilyl ether. No OH group. So now there's no problem using magnesium to make the Grignard reaction. So here's that chemistry we planned up above. And here's the Grignard reagent that we can make without a problem.
This is often abbreviated TMS. So we can react with the aldehyde. Not an issue. Hydrolyze with water and make the trimethylsilyl ether of this new alcohol. Now it turns out that there is, and this is very clever, there is a simple way to regenerate the hydroxyl group from the TMS ether functional group, and that's by treatment with fluoride. Now you guys know you can't buy a bottle of fluoride. Fluoride usually comes in the form of a compound called tetrabutyl. ammonium fluoride. Where this is literally positively charged and this is negatively charged and we often abbreviate this as tetra butyl ammonium fluoride. And in very good yield, this will turn TMS ethers into alcohols. So, protecting alcohols using silyl ethers is a simple concept that can be implemented simply. Treat the hydroxyl group that would otherwise interfere with chemistry that you wish to do with TMS chloride and triethylamine to make the ether. Conduct the chemistry, whether it's a Grignard reagent or treatment with strong base or other types of chemistry that the OH would prevent to make a product that's still the TMS ether and then regenerate the OH group using fluoride in the form of tetrabutyl ammonium fluoride.